All right. Good morning. Happy Tuesday to everybody. And let's go ahead and get started. So today is March 9th, 2021. My name is Jared. I'm a moderator at Bearbolt Traders, and this is the Morning Brew. So we're going to go ahead and start off as we always do, taking a look at our uh, index ETFs, see if we can get a gauge on some market directionality or some opportunity this morning. So looking at our SPY, bringing up our 20, 50, and 200, just kind of zooming in a little bit. We can see we're in an area of somewhat indecision at the moment. Uh, we've had some relatively large range days over the past couple of trading sessions. And what we've been seeing is that some of these uh, momentum gap up sort of moves, any sort of strength returning, we've seen that that has been willing to be sold into. I think most notably yesterday, uh, we had a lot of trouble getting back above what was essentially our breakdown point from before. So if you can see these upper five to six candles, we have a lot of bottoming wicks and you can see that we rejected around this point. So the market is currently showing us that these recent all time high sort of overextended uh, price levels are being respected in regards to a back test and a fail to get back into this range. Um, we're also keeping in mind that we are starting to re-enter our bullish channel. So from a medium term perspective, we're trying to reclaim some amounts of bullish strength, but short term, we are still seeing a little bit of weakness and a willingness to sell at resistance. Looking at our four hour, I've drawn this very just simple trend line from some of our recent highs, and I'm using the latest high as my point of, I guess, a uh, connection. So if I swing this around, the latest point is here. We've had some tests on these uh, trading sessions, and then we had this sort of peak above and failure um, sometime last week. So. When I look at this structure, what I see is that there is a lot of indecision when it comes to directionality. We're seeing large range and a lot of conviction of bulls to hold down at 375, but we're also seeing short term short or selling at this downtrend resistance. Now what's occurring uh, within, I would say the past two sessions, it was we are starting to get more and more tight in the SPY. So we're starting to consolidate and get a, uh, I would say like a tightening wedge or range that's building. And we can very simply just use our bullish channel uh, lower end along with this downtrend line to get an idea of when this may potentially break. Um, we discussed the idea that this may take some time and we could easily see the markets continue to sort of show indecision as this range gets tighter. But overall, there will be a winner at some point. And when that occurs, the losers will have to either cover their position or just sort of re-engage the market in a different way. So, um, I guess a, a note here is that this has been a rather challenging market to trade against if you're just looking for the SPY to give you a sense of directionality. Because as we've seen, the SPY is throwing a lot of indecision both to the upside from those extended lows and then to the downside on this downtrending resistance level. If we look at our just 10 day 30 minute and we pull up our volume profile to get a sense of where value is, um, 383 still remains an area of high value over the past 10 days. 
And if I pull it back just to an hour, just to get a, a larger scale sense, 383 is the value area over the past 30 days. So <clears throat> this is more than just a short term value area. It's, it's a monthly value area. <clears throat> it's very significant to us. And the reason we're consolidating and seeing this value get placed here is because a lot of value was here prior and now we're just returning to it and once again trying to decide if we want to go higher from here or lower from here. And from a very simple technical perspective, we want to just keep simple sort of breakout and breakdown zones in mind. Um, the, the simple ones that I'm choosing to keep are this channel low and then the recent high that we made on yesterday as we start to tighten up on this downtrend that we're forming from the all-time high. So a uh, lot of value here, short term and medium term, but opportunity will come when we see some sort of range expansion from either, I will call it 387.50, the highs from yesterday that we had a lot of trouble getting over. We actually sold off into the close or if we start to maybe lose yesterday's low and break below this channel, we could easily come back to retest um, some of these bottom ranges, maybe like 377, 372, you know, somewhere in this range. So opportunity in both directions, we just need to see which one they want to choose. In order to get a sense of maybe what direction they want to choose, we want to see if there's any other signals that we can leverage. The cues are still showing that they are sort of in a, a downtrending selling mode. We had some pretty significant selling yesterday, but notably we did not lose the low from Monday. So from the perspective of just candle to candle, we are still trapped within a range right now. We cannot break out uh, roughly 310 and we cannot break down on 300 just yet. So it's a lot of range, it's a lot to work with, but we are still trapped. And this is pretty obvious on the four hour, you can see that price is simply going from 300 to 310, 300. And now we're sitting somewhere in the middle of this range at around 306. Normally, range rules dictate that if you come to the lower end of your range and you fail to break down, you often will go to the top of your range and retest the high. So if you have a clear range that's being defined, and we do in the case of the Qs, we can go from 310 to 300 and just sort of see that oscillation occur as the market tries to dictate whether this is going to break out from 310 or break down from 300. Um, we're obviously in some support zones from uh, from September highs. We have a little bit of support structure here that we tested on some of the major selling that we saw on Monday. So once again, we'll kind of see what this range does, but this is an area of interest on the daily with two significant highs acting as support zones. Uh, back to the four hour, just noting that, you know, all the moving averages are above us. They are starting to slope down. I think even if we do see a breakout of 310, we do have some resistance to target. This would be the channel and, uh, sorry, this would be the daily trend uh, that we did lose. So this back test could easily be a target on a breakout of this range. And then we have the 200 on the four hour, which is a, a fairly obvious, um, area of resistance that we've seen one, two, three times. So if we do break out, then we can come right around here. Maybe a good target if you're looking for sort of a short term bullish play. And then if we break down, we would look to the daily for some more significant targets. Ten day, 30 minute, loading up the volume profile. We're seeing 316 as our value zone, and we're sitting right at the low end of the range around 307 in pre-market. 
usually the the way to play this volume profile is that you're if you're far away from value usually the probability is in your favor to return to value if you continue to move away from value it tends to be more of a short covering or sort of a capitulation sell-off sort of thesis and the fact that we're building range down here and starting to form areas of support um, i think at the moment i'm kind of looking more to the return of value so um, just in the interest of looking at the 30 day, we do see that 317 is also the value over the past 30 days. So once again, if we break bullish from 310, 317 is not only a short term target from the volume profile perspective, but even over the course of the past month, I think it would be a decent target to look for with the potential to get to your daily trend and even higher if we see something more significant. And this would be dictated by strength in technology, uh, strength in semiconductors and other sectors that we're interested in. And then finally on IWM, if we load up the 20, 50 and 200, I'm gonna take off some of this information just because we haven't tested it yet. Uh, still far removed from our daily trend. Uh, we have kept the 50 in this index. We have back tested the 20 and we did pull away from it, similar to the SPY. So IWM and SPY are showing some similar sort of setups and overall patterns. Uh, but I would say from the perspective of the daily, the IWM remains a stronger ETF overall. Uh, we sold off a little harder, but we are seeing more significant bounce follow through and a return to some of this bullish structure that we had prior to the sell off. This would be somewhere around here. You can see one, two, three tests, and then we're trying to get back above. So, um, let's see, I haven't really looked at this one too much, but, uh, if we look at IWM here, we do see this level of support. I think 215, just marking that as a major support level on these tests and the recent bounce that we've seen. We're getting back into our daily trend. And then we just notably have this very rough downtrend line. I've drawn it from about all time highs and then I've just brought it to the recent high that we had here before the major sell off. So. Um, IWM, if, if we reclaim these moving averages, if we reclaim the trend, um, getting back to this resistance and just running a test makes a lot of sense. And that would bring us to about 225. So really not too far away for IWM. Um, we need to see general strength in the market for that to occur. And then if we bring it down to our 30 minute, this, uh, particular ETF is a little more thinly traded, but overall value sitting around 219, we're actually above value, which is showing that once again, the bullish bounce had a little bit more follow through. We're able to get above our value zone on that bounce. And therefore momentum could kick in for us to come and test the downtrend line and the VA high range, which would be about 225. Um, you know, overall, I think that target just kind of makes sense. It's a um, fairly low risk, high reward in this structure, and uh, it would make sense in regards to the bounce play. Um, if we look at the 10 day, 30 minute value is sitting actually a little bit higher on this one. Once again, an indication that this is a relatively stronger ETF. Uh, 226.35 is where value has been placed over the past 30 days. We're still sitting below it, but we are within the range of the past 30 days uh, where most of the value has been placed. So we saw our 215 bounce. Uh, we had some, obviously some weakness over the past, uh, past week. 215 bounce, getting back into trend and then trying to get back to value. From there, we could see if this resistance line is going to act as resistance once again and then once again we may consolidate or break down from that point but there is a a structural momentum play to be had here back to value 
Okay. Um, what I'd like to do today is take another look at our sector ETFs. And um, let's see, just answering a question. And I'll actually go over that a little bit, Mike. Um, so when we look at our sector ETFs, I'm going to bring this just to the daily to get a sense of where we are and who's in control. I'll just bring up the 20, 50, 200 indicator. Um, what I've done is I've sorted these by market cap and um, things with a larger market cap are going to be at the top, lower market cap at the bottom. Um, for some reason, communication is not showing a market cap. It is a sector of the SPY. And for some of these, these are not major sectors like home builders and biotech. So I will be kind of bouncing around a little bit when I get down here. The ones that I care about though, are the ones with the large market cap. So overall, uh, besides communication, that one's just a little weird with uh, this particular filter on the column. So um, technology, very similar to the Qs. I think if we see strength in technology, we will see strength in the Qs. Keep in mind XLK, this is strictly technology in regards to the S&P 500. So it includes things like Apple at 20%, Microsoft at 20%, and then you're gonna see things like Visa, MasterCard, Nvidia, and PayPal hold up a lot of uh, percentages in these ETFs. Obviously, the two ones that we care about are the two biggest ones, but there is some relative strength in these smaller percentages if they're all moving in the same direction. So um, the thing to keep in mind is that we want to see Apple get strong and we want to see Microsoft get strong. Everything else, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Tesla, you know, things that people think of as technology, they don't really dictate this particular ETF. And instead, I would be looking to the semiconductors, which have been relatively weak, even weaker than the tech sector, um, to see if they have any sort of bounce play. Financials, not showing weakness over this past, uh, call it a couple of weeks. Financials have actually made a new all-time high as of yesterday. So when looking at the SPY, the financials hold up some significance to the S&P. And the fact that they're making an all-time high is counterbalancing some of the weakness that we're seeing in tech. Obviously, if all sectors are going up or down at the same time, that is something for us to keep note of and not fight uh, intraday or otherwise. But as long as we see financials holding this bullish trend, which they've had for multiple months, then we want to say at least somewhat pessimistic to an all out sell off in the SPY because true selling in the SPY will occur across all sectors. And right now financials have not shown us that they are selling. They are simply trending on the, the daily. Um, it is notable that yesterday we did make an all-time high with a topping tail. So something maybe to watch today. We'll see if there's any sort of, you know, pullback. And we're getting some of that this morning, maybe a pullback in financials that could lead to some weakness or just a rotation back to tech. XLY, very weak. Um, coming all the way down to our daily 200 almost. And what I want to call out here, actually, let me go to financials. So financials, Berkshire, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citi. A lot of these are fairly good day trading candidates if you're interested in financials. If they're showing strength and you're a bullish trader, this could be some opportunity for you if you haven't traded them before. XLY, um, weak 
overall coming down to the 200. Very significant bounce as of Friday, but we haven't seen a lot of follow through yet. <clears throat> and we're actually just kind of looking to see if they can make a short term sort of consolidation or trend reversal. Thing to keep note of here, some of the largest holdings in XLY are Amazon and Tesla. Uh, you know, back to the whole idea, Tesla is not a technology company in the sense of the S&P. It is a consumer discretionary company. And the weighting of these two companies is very similar to how Apple and Microsoft control the technology sector. Um, you know, if you put these two together, it represents about 35% of this ETF. And therefore, if you see selling in Amazon, Tesla, and even maybe some of these HD, uh, sorry, Home Depot, Microsoft, Nike, S, uh, Starbucks, this can dictate a large percentage of the consumer discretionary sector. So when looking at that, uh, I guess like that overall weighting and the fact that Tesla in particular can move relatively uh, wide based on its price levels. So like it can move $100 in a day. Um, that can provide a lot of both strength and weakness to the market very quickly because it holds a lot of market cap and it moves really aggressively. It has a high beta. So um, those are things to keep in mind. We saw Amazon and Tesla kind of hold up slightly yesterday and that could be dictating maybe a short term correction in XLY. XLV, um, <clears throat> go to our analyze tab. This is going to be our healthcare, J and J, United Health, Abbott, Pfizer, and maybe AbV. Um, weightings here are more distributed, so you won't see one or two companies dictating the entire move in this sector. But um, when it comes to the S&P, healthcare is a pretty large sector. It's a uh, second to tech. So we would like to see some strength return to healthcare. And we have a similar look where we're starting to reject the 20 moving average on the daily. And therefore, the momentum could easily continue to the downside if this continues to hold as resistance. So um, I guess, yeah, I, I don't really have much to say to that one. Uh, last but not least, uh, industrials. So similar to financials and actually similar to energy, which I will bring up shortly, um, industrials has once again made a significant high. It is in fact an all time high in industrials. So um, <clears throat> while we are seeing weakness in the tech sector, financials, industrials, and even energy, not at all time highs, but at a relative high. You can bring this back to see we are starting to get to a resistance point. Um, while we are seeing weakness in tech, there have been multiple sectors that have been helping us stay elevated in the SPY. And what we want to carry forward for any of these sectors is that if there is ever a point in time where all sectors are pointed in one direction, that can dictate things like a breakout or a breakdown of these more major support and resistance zones. So for today, I think specifically because we're seeing some topping tails and in industrials and financials, we're obviously still looking at tech to see if there's any strength that's going to return. And then we have things like energy hitting major resistance zones and also just being a little bit overbought. I would say that this is a fairly significant rally. This could easily pull back or at the very least consolidate over time. If any of this does occur this week, we may see either indecision in the SPY as 
these strong sectors start to consolidate and pull back. We would want to see tech get strong for us to at least have some bullish thesis. But if they all start to pull back and tech continues to be weak, there is very little holding up the SPY at that point. And obviously the Qs will take it on the chin as well if tech keeps going down. So um, intraday, what I would advise and could recommend as someone who's, who's done it before is that if you're trying to get a sense of market directionality intraday or otherwise, take some time to look at these sectors. Know the fact that they do hold weighting to the SPY. And if any of them are showing weakness, see if other sectors are following suit. Is it an all sort of all participant sort of selling or buying? Is everyone pointed in the same direction or is there a lot of back and forth? more rotation. And when you get that rotation, you tend to get days that are either shorter in range or just overall non-directional. Um, I would argue that yesterday was relatively non-directional in the grand scheme of things because tech was relatively flat, even though we saw weakness into the close, and yet financials, energy, and industrials held us up most of the day. Um, the last thing that I, I kind of want to mention is that those topping tails in financials, in energy, or sorry, in industrials and potentially in energy, um, I want to see if those have follow through because if we just look at the perspective of, let's say, financials, this could very easily be, if I draw this and then I draw maybe like the recent lows that we made, this is a range high, low, high, low, high, breakout. But I wanna see, are we gonna fall back into the range? And if we do, normal range rules in the market dictate that a failed breakout of range, failed expansion of range, tends to go back and retest the bottom of the range. If that happens, that's a pretty significant pullback in financials it's a pretty significant pullback in industrials with our high and our low. Brings us back all the way down to where we were on uh, Friday when things were kind of getting a little worrisome in the market. And if tech is also breaking down, and you can see here that we very clearly have a range, but it's not in a good spot because it's at the bottom. If tech breaks down, well then what is holding the SPY? And any sort of bullish thesis that we're putting together sort of fades away. We would then be looking for more, uh, I would say short-term selling, breaking of support, potentially some sort of capitulation occurring in the market over the course of the next couple of days. However, if the opposite occurs, then we will still be looking more towards an, a short-term uptrend uh, approach, which the market has still been in for a period of time. So, with that said, um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, tomorrow, we will look a little bit more closely at our commodities market. So we'll start looking at crude, natural gas, gold, silver, um, I think this topic is a little bit more appropriate for today because there's more opportunity today if we see some of that rotation start to occur in the markets again. And then uh, I've, I've been asked to maybe look at uh, some of the crypto markets. We may take some time to look at that on Thursday. I think notably um, Bitcoin has been of interest to a lot of market participants. And we are actually seeing a trend reversal in Bitcoin as of last night. Uh, there has been a four hour trend reversal and therefore an attempt to the all time high on Bitcoin. Um, if that's of interest, then obviously I'll, I'll bring that up and we'll kind of see how that goes. So, all right, y'all. Well then that's pretty much it for the morning brew. Um, obviously, hopefully we'll see if any of this comes to fruition today or in the next couple days. But keep an eye on these things. I think they're really important for 
gauging what we're going to be doing next after all this um, short-term selling has occurred. And with that said, I'm Jared. Um, next up is Carlos and Norm with the pre-market prep. This has been Morning Brew and Trade Safe. Thank you. Uh, morning, everyone. Welcome to the pre-market prep. Hopefully, everyone's having an amazing morning. Hope you had a great day yesterday. Good morning, Norm. How are you doing today? Hey, good morning, buddy. I'm doing great. I hope you are as well. Good morning uh -huh. to everybody else in the room, too. Excellent, excellent. Yes, doing pretty good here. Um, all right, guys, let's get to it. Let's see what we had yesterday on our list, starting with AMC. Uh, let's get our five-minute uh, chart in here. Let's bring this over. Um, here's AMC yesterday. So again, a little bit of a rough start. Uh, a lot of things did not trade very clean out of the gates. AMC was one of them. Uh, definitely took a time to get going. Eventually did give you a nice breakout here. This would have been a great high of day breakout if you call it this in time. Uh, but again, not a clean start. It did give you a couple of pops here. And then uh, again, just kind of moving sideways here. Not a whole lot going on for AMC. And this is a difficult stock to trade with the way uh, things have been, and we know that, right? Um, here's CAN. CAN was another one. Look at the chop right at the beginning of the market open. Again, just a lot of indecision going on here. It does uh, trade right into a kind of wedge or a point here, and then eventually you get this beautiful breakout, right? Uh, tough to trade this because you don't know if you're going to still be stuck in this up and down action. So, right, this is a tough trade to take. Eventually, it does break out of the high of the day and then gives you a beautiful rejection all the way down to the uh, uh, VWAP, and then it continues down. After you let or so you're gonna see this for a lot of the stocks that we're gonna show you next you do start seeing this uh this kind of sell-off in a lot of the stocks so not just this one if you look at CN, you see this beautiful sell-off down to the low of the day and then some uh but a lot of stocks did have that i'll show you that in a second here's american airlines again a bit of a chop at the open just a lot of indecision going you get the pop up here and you don't get the breakdown on american airlines like you did with can uh again just kind of moving sideways like amc did here uh, as well so again rough day yesterday was not as clean uh here's oxy oxy there's no uh pop-up at all on this one just the uh, overall breakdown uh it's just never really had a chance to get going here it did look good at the pre-market and the daily looks great on this one but again just broke down nicely comes back retests the vwap here and then a great uh, uh, drop again on Axie. So beautiful play there. Here's uh, FSR. FSR was brutal yesterday. I got I got caught up on this one pretty bad um, as far as how many trades I took. But man, this is uh, this was tough. It was just pretty nasty here, just back and forth, back and forth. Eventually it does settle down, gives you a beautiful drop towards the bottom uh, of the low of the day here. But overall, a very, very tough stock to trade. Uh, XPEF, same thing, guys. Again, you get this chop here in the, at the morning, very difficult to trade. Then eventually around 11 o'clock, you start seeing this sell-off uh, that we saw in many of the stocks. So again, um, not a clean day yesterday. I know the SPY is moving a lot, but uh, trades are not as easy to find, uh, were at least yesterday for me. So... With that said, guys, let's get over to the market pulse, see what's going on there. Norm, what's the latest and greatest before we uh, look at our gappers? Yeah, we're not going to get any more economic data today. We had small business index come out oh, a couple hours ago. And uh, so that's it for today. Um, SPY's up nearly a percent. Q's up 2.2% bouncing. They are sitting right around the 100-day average, we're getting some dip buying here. See if it holds. I'm sure Jared went through all that already. So, um, you know, we'll um, 
should be an interesting day. See if we get anything from, uh, you know, uh, hopefully it cleans up a little bit. Absolutely. Let's see what happens there. All right, guys, let's get to our list. Let's remove what we had yesterday. Let's get rid of all of this here. And we will make our rows in here and see what we have in our gappers list. Not a whole lot in our gapping down list today, uh, but we do have a bit on our gapping up list. And plenty of low flow stocks in here. If you look at 6.3, 1.4, 33, not so much low flow, but the rest here pretty low. So we'll go through this quickly. Again, we want to see really, really clean trading when it comes to these lower flow stocks. And, you, and we want to see amazing volume, right? That's very important. Here's eyes. Uh, here's eyes. Right, let's try that again. Here's eyes. Okay, that's still not working. Um, let me check our link here. Uh, while we do this, for those that do not know, Trade Ideas allows you to link with your Dash Trader Pro. You can come in here, open this external link. This is located. It's going to be located over you know, when you go to Trade Ideas in your tools. You click your tools. You're going to have the external linking. You click on that. This pop up will come up. And at link, then you're going to, this other pop up will come up. Go over to where you want Trade Ideas to submit uh, the ticker and hit shift and then okay and that would do it you can just minimize this now go over to your trade ideas and you can click on here and this will work also if you want to send this uh this uh ticker anywhere else if you have another platform you use you can do that as well all right here's eyes uh let's get into it uh what do we have here on eyes this morning we are up 76 percent so a nice big pop for them the uh, last couple of days have been really good on eyes let's take a Let's definitely take a look at this one. This is a low flow stock sitting at 6.3. So you want to be extra careful with this one. Uh, we'll keep an eye uh, uh, on this one here. Uh, here we go. ANPC. Uh, ANPC at the moment. Uh, they're up 60%. Not as clean as eyes. Eyes looks a lot better. 5 million shares traded. Um, but again, we'll, we'll keep eyes. I think this was a little bit better uh, than no. ANPC is. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep this one off for now. Surf. Surf 33 million, not really a low flow stock, but uh, either way, you want to be careful with, with this one. Doesn't look great, guys. Horrible pre market action. Again, you want to see something like ICE has, right? Uh, this right here, great volume, great movement. This is what we're looking for on these lower flow stocks. Uh, uh, Norm, was this the one you traded yesterday, I believe? ICE, yeah. Yeah, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes, it and was I've very got Romo. I've got Romo on it this morning. I almost took that <laughs> breakout from about 2020, and I just, I was getting ready for the show. I hesitated for a second. It was too late by the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I had a chance at it, so. Gotcha. Uh, so th there's eyes looking good again for another day. The last couple of days doing really good. I don't think we saw it on Monday, but we definitely had it on our watch list yesterday. Uh, head down to surf. Doesn't look good, guys. Skip on to the next one. Uh, TR, TRIT. Another, this one we had in our list in the past. Uh, doesn't look great neither. Um, it could get better, though. Maybe it could, but for the most part, right now, the way it is, it's not looking great. We'll skip on that one. SFT. Uh, mm -hmm. SFT here, horrible guys. It's not looking great uh, at all. Daily looks just uh, insane. This is this is madness. So let's stay away from that one. Here's Lissy. She's also 10 million shares float, and uh, she is not looking good neither, guys. Again, very low volume, uh, up 15 percent. But again, just the volume is not there, and we need that volume for these lower flow stocks to trade a little bit cleaner. Here's Rise. So the bit Bitcoin is up quite a bit. I see Rise. I see. Uh, uh, CAN, Mara, a lot of Bitcoin stuff here looking pretty good this yeah. morning. Um, so they're up nice. Let's see which one looks the best out of all of this. Um, actually, we skipped a few. Hold on. GLSI. All right. This was the one yesterday that in the chat room we were watching went from like 24 up to 50. Uh, again, very, very uh, low flow stock, 1.6. Be careful with this, guys. Uh, I don't like the way it looks this morning. The spread is horrible. It's a dollar spread. Uh, and it was like that yesterday, too. Uh, so if you're going to be trading this, be very, very careful. I won't be watching this one. Uh, going back to the Bitcoin place here, we have Raya, we have CAN, and we have Mara. They all look pretty similar. Mara is the one I tend to watch the most. Um, out of all of these, so maybe I'll add Mara today. Let's look at CAN. Daily looks good. Riot, uh, it's okay. Who has the most volume? Uh, yeah, Mara has slightly the most volume, but both Mara and CAN could be decent here. We'll put them both here for now. We'll see which one we keep off this list. Heading on down, NVTA. Uh, NVTA this morning, not looking good, guys. Not a clean pre market action. I don't see anything great at the moment. Their daily is also pretty bad, so uh, we'll stop there. Let's look at GameStop. Uh, GameStop had a nice little breakout yesterday. I wonder how clean that was. I did not watch this one. Um, not, not too bad if you are patient here. So not too bad of a breakout there on the GameStop yesterday. Today, they're up 11.6. We definitely want to keep an eye on this one. Uh, again, I, I won't be trading, but it's just fun to watch. 
Um, all right, let's stop here with what's gapping up this morning. We have a whole lot on here, guys, a lot in the green uh, today. Let's see what's gapping down. ACAD, this one is down 42%. Massive drop for this one this morning. A 1.3 million shares traded right now. So uh, interesting pre-market action. Their daily does not get a whole lot of volume, but today they have almost uh, what they trade a whole day in the pre-market already. So that could be interesting. Uh, let's dig into what we have going on there. Norm, jump in if you, if you have something uh, in regards to that big gap down. Here's uh, SFIX. Now, SFIX is Stitch Fix. Uh, they're down 21% this morning. Not a great pre market action. They tend not to put the best pre market action yeah, in. Yeah, they, they had some FDA issues. Uh, Stiffish or, or ACAD? ACAD had some oh. uh, FDA issues. And they also uh, they got a price target reduction out of an analyst this morning. Mm, okay, so not not fun for ACAD guys. We'll definitely keep an eye on this one uh, this morning uh, again. Stitch Fix had earnings, there. earnings on Stitch Fix, so not doing well yeah. there. Uh, down twenty one percent, and we traded this one before in the past, guys. It can trade a little choppy at times, but I do like that catalyst. I do like the drop, and where we're sitting here on the daily, I think this is worth giving giving a. A look at today so stiff fish will put it on here uh, again just it, it can be choppy we've seen that uh, uh out of this one DK. it's not mm -hmm. I, I have found stitch fix to not be super liquid um yeah it just doesn't get the order flow sometimes so mm -hmm. I, it, it looks potential it looks like it has potential i definitely need to see some heavy smooth order flow going through it in order to take something on it because it, it yeah. also has a terrible spread uh, and yeah. it spreads almost 90 cents right now yeah, it, it, again, it is it is not great, guys. So we'll, we'll keep it on here. Let's see if this catalyst can do something with this gap down that we have. Uh, but yeah, we, we know that this is not, not a good one. So thanks, Norm, for that one. DKS, uh, DKS right now, not looking good, guys. Pre-market action looks earnings. pretty much flat. Earnings on this one. Um, so we'll put as a possible, maybe. This is nice. I, I, yeah. I think DKS, I, I'm not a big fan of this one. Um, mm -hmm. But overall, that having been said, uh, it's a nice stock. They had earnings this morning. They actually had good earnings. Their guidance was a little bit off uh, of what streets uh, of what Wall Street's estimating. Um, so it, it it could be interesting. But those nice ones, a lot of times you don't see the volume coming until the open. Yeah, especially re, re, sitting on the retail side, they're they're usually not great pre market action. We'll put it as a possible for now. Uh, and, and see what comes out of that. Uh, here's V A L E, not looking good at the moment. Daily, we've seen this one before as well. Daily is pretty bad here, guys. Uh, pre market action is horrible. They're down 3%, 322. Uh, but again, we, we traded this one before, before, or at least looked at it, and it doesn't trade well. Uh, go ed, uh, horrible. Yeah, that it is, does not. It's, it's foreign and it does not trade well. Yeah, that is nasty. Dash uh, this morning. What is Dash? Dash is, oh, DoorDash. Uh, they're taking a, a bit of a hit here down well not really 2.2 they take a bit hit over the last couple of weeks that they have um as you can see here dropping uh, nicely down to 130 from 210 to 20. uh 1.4 any earnings uh play on this one looks like they got they negative going on negative sir mm -hmm. no, nothing uh, else uh, i don't see anything fresh on it really gotcha all right it doesn't again doesn't look great guys i love the drop here with the last couple of days but i don't think this is one that we really want to watch today i like the volume though you know let, let's just put it here just in case just in case all right norm what do you like this morning so far that sounds good to me too uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, amd uh I, i'm sure i'll make uh peter's heart flutter amd actually um could be something worth watching today we've mm -hmm. just had it, it's had a massive pullback you know 20 percent ish uh so it, we'll see if it, it gets a bounce as the cues bounce mu same boat kind mm -hmm. of uh space has had that big pullback in the last uh well i mean it's been going on for several weeks or maybe even a month but uh, yeah. especially in the last week or so after the shamoth selling news came out so um maybe somebody steps in to buy a little bit here uh mm -hmm. and then plug plug as well because plug uh trading strong it's had a pullback i'm curious to see if we get any buyers yeah yeah i do like space uh, uh that, that that looks good uh as far as the daily here we're sitting at uh with all the support so we'll see what comes out of that um all right guys let's start with you guys over in our chat room what do we have let's start with uh let's go scroll up here amit amit k giving us neo 
Uh, let's see what we got going on here. Neo, yeah, Neo is active. Two point eight today, up five point seven. Um, their drop over the last couple of days has been insane. Sitting at a thirty five hundred one. What is this level of resistance? Um, we lost a great level of support over at forty uh, in the last three days. So yeah, Neo is great. I think Neo looks good. I don't know if it's uh, uh, in play per se, one hundred percent, but it does look great. The, the XPEV also did uh, did okay yesterday, so we'll keep an eye on this one uh heading, yeah neo every day right erica heading on down what else so neo neo everybody's throwing neo space we do have uh edwin is giving us apple let's take a look at apple what's on there uh for today yeah i think apple is very similar to um what, what norm you mentioned one is uh, amd mu kind of these a tech type yeah. plays you know yeah. the queues are bouncing you can definitely watch apple they're a big player and if you were watching uh, jared's uh, this morning he was talking about the tech sector as well um, so Apple is good. We can watch that one. PLTR. Let's take a look at that one. Uh, PLTR. All right. What do we have here? Um, yeah. PLTR, man. I mean, it's just, it can be so, I, we didn't have it yesterday, but it can be so choppy uh, at times as we, you know, we have talked about in the past. I'm not sure about this one. I just don't know. I think we can have some other stuff that looks slightly better. Uh, they're up 4% this morning, 2.1 million. Um, but not sure if this thing is actually in play for today. So uh, I'm on I the fence trading on that stock every day that I take it off my list. It's a good trading stock. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. So, um, well, what the heck? Well, we'll put it on for now. We'll put it on for now. Let's see what what uh, we can get out of it. All right, let's head down. Xpev, um, PLTR, Neo. We have. Uh, we'll put, look at Xpev next, but let me not skip EXPR. What is this? Uh, EXPR. Uh, what do we have going on here? Uh, we are down 3.5, 1.8 million. A little bit of a good day yesterday. What is what, what company is this? What's the flow? Uh, we're looking at 60 million. This is Express. Um, I'm not sure about this one, guys. Daily looks a little funky here. Is this the clothing company Express? Is, yeah, is this it's what this meme, is? meme stock too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. So we'll, we'll skip that one, guys, uh, for now. Um, XPEV, let's take a look there. A couple of you guys throwing that one out. Let's see what's going on with XPEF this morning. And we are we are up 7%. Yeah, similar to NEO. Again, we can put it on here too. We can decide which we want to watch. Both XPEF and NEO are very similar at the moment. Uh, obviously, NEO with a lot more volume at 3 million. Their pre-market action looks good. Um, let's see how they're going to take uh, uh, take that into the pre into the market open. Uh, heading on down, guys, we have uh, TR, TRT. Yeah, we looked at this one before. I, I don't like the daily on this one, guys. And just be careful. Their pre-market action does, doesn't look great. It could get better as they get more volume. But again, just be be, be careful with that one. It's not a low flow stock. It's sitting at 23 million. So it's just shy of that low flow 20 million that we like. Uh, so be mindful of that one. ACAD we do have. That's on deck already. Uh, let's take a look at CCL here. Uh, CCL at the moment. Uh, I think they're pretty much flat right now. So I don't think they're really in play. Their volume is extremely light. Uh, 520,000 uh, 20, is very light for um, a CCL. American Airlines also very light on the volume as well. So there's pretty much flat right now for these travel companies. I wouldn't put I wouldn't put them on my watch list at the moment. And what we'll do is we, we know those tickers. They hit our scanners. We can quickly take a look at them and see what's going on there. Um, so what does what does Carlos look for the daily uh, good versus bad? Okay, that's a good, a great question. Let's let's take a look at an example of some um, eyes. Well, this is a horrible daily here, but it's a beautiful breakout. Let's find a good example here. That's a good question. Uh, ANPC, this well, one here. I, well, and and be mindful too that what we look for on a daily for a. A mid float or a large float stock is going to be greatly different mm. than what we look for on a low float because these low yes. floats, frankly, the daily can't tell you much. It's these yeah. quick momentum pops that come out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. I would, I would go. I that's, would not use this as an example because this is one point yeah, four so million. One point four, right? Right. Let's look at uh, this is thirty three. Uh, this is okay. Let me see a larger float. Yeah, because that's a good point. We we look at things and also glad you, glad you brought that up. The pre market is different as well. And let's talk about the pre-market action, right? So here, this AMPC, if this was a not a low flow stock, if it was a stock that was, a, let's say, 50 million shares flow, this would have been a great pre-market action uh, in great volume, right? So this would have been excellent, no question about it. Um, if, the, if this daily was on a higher flow stock, not a 1.4, this would have been horrible. Why? Because the chop. You see how choppy this is? You don't want to see something like that on a higher flow stock. Now, as Nor mentioned, lower flow stocks like this one, you don't care about the daily. You care more about the price action happening now because you usually just get a spike like you did here, and then they fall off or they might continue the next day, right? That's what you're looking for. Now, if we look at a ACAD, 
Uh, ACAD here, for example, this is not a great daily, right? This is a uh, 159 million shares flow. You don't see a lot of movement here between the days, right? So that's not a great daily that we're looking for here. You don't have a lot of great levels to find. Let me find a good level uh, daily here. S SFIX actually, on, if you look at the daily, it has great movement. This is a great daily. So you, what you want to see, you want to see the price action. You want to see nice uh, white candles in here. You want to see patterns forming. This looks really good. I want to trade a stock that looks like this. Unfortunately, we know SFIX from experience doesn't trade very well. Um, but that's what we're looking for in the daily. Even DKS here, guys. Look, this is a great daily. You got movement in here. What you don't want to see is a stock like KO. Um, KO, this is a horrible daily. Right, great for investment, long-term trades. They got great dividends and all that. You want to invest in this one for sure, longer term. But look at the daily. This is horrible. Every candle overlaps the previous candle. This is a great example of a horrible, horrible intraday trade a trading type stock. Right, and you're going to get that chop into the market uh, open as well with KO. So hopefully, throw that up one more. Throw up one yep. more example: a telltale, a foreign stock, bud, B U D. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. This is a so man, that is a yeah. terrible daily, too. Yeah, I mean, how do you it's do just levels all over this? the place? Yeah, yeah. It, it's just spotty, it doesn't move during the day, mm -hmm. it gaps a lot, it, it's just all over the place. So, yeah, exactly. But you'll so. see that with you'll see that with foreign stocks all the time. Yeah, you got all these gaps up and down, and, and it translates into the trading day as well, guys. The intraday trades on these type of stocks is horrible, it's really, really bad. So, uh, that's what we're looking for there. That, that we also get into this more into our, in our classes. So, if you haven't gone to the classes yet, um, we, we get into more details on what we're looking for. You know, good pre market action, bad pre market action, why we pick some of the levels that we pick. You're going to find that in the education center as well. So, hopefully, that was helpful there. Um, let's head on over to our YouTube chat, see what we have here, guys. Let's start with uh what we have here let's go up a little bit okay let's start with um uh, cam cam ocgn um let's see what's going on here so ocgn at the moment this year guys not a great daily as well see how choppy this is not a great daily uh for the most part they've been very active there uh, they have one million shares traded but i don't think they're in play right now pretty flat as far as gapping up or down i don't see anything great on it um i think we have other stocks here that are moving a little bit nicer this morning that I'd rather have on my on my uh, on my scanners on my watch list. Now OCGN guys, if it starts losing these levels here, like it tried before in the past, it ran pretty well here. Uh, if it bounces off of that, it runs pretty well. We have to see something like that. But the last couple of days has not done a whole lot there. Uh, let's look at OPGN. OPGN penny stock. Penny stock. Oh yeah. So penny stocks again. We don't we don't really focus on those. Let's skip that one. PSR uh psr here this is no volume here guys at all so again you don't have volume if you did still this is a horrible daily look how choppy this is uh you're not getting volume you, you don't what eighty eight thousand is the most they had yeah that's horrible you get into the intraday there you're gonna have a, a really hard time smoked. looking look, at whoa, that whoa, price whoa, whoa 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 stop talk to look me, at the talk spread to look at the spread wow can you imagine placing a market order on that one <laughs> placing any order you buy it you have to if you're going to take that loan you're buying it at 134 dollars instantly uh, I, I, uh it, oh. it's worth 87. that is brutal guys brutal you don't want you do not want to be touching you know. that. no stay no, away no, no, from no. that <laughs> uh fsr fsr what's going on here uh they're up six points you know F i like fsr um they had a, a couple of good days i had some really good trades in here on fsr uh let's see but right now they're up 6.2 360,000 shares traded pre-market action is not great their daily though looks nice here for a possible break i like the fact that we're uh banging our heads up against this 24. um that could be interesting not a great great stock but maybe a possible let's see how that turns out later in the day um disney disney what what is going on with disney here so disney taking a bit of a drop here after a good day yesterday it could be interesting but pretty much flat right now guys so the volume is not quite there at the moment for Disney, not that they put in a whole lot of volume in the pre-market to begin with. Um, you know, we have so much. This, this could be good. I'd rather drop Dash. Let's drop Door Dash here. I'd rather watch Disney, actually. Um, I think there's more potential there on Disney. Uh, GameStop we do have here. Uh, that is on deck. AMC, we looked at yesterday. GameStop is starting to be active here, up 14 point two one point nine million that's good dkng what's going on with those guys uh not much in the in the pre-market at the moment only three hundred thousand shares traded their daily looks good i see what you're looking at possible breakout to test some of these levels here but we can catch this one in our scanners um sos i think we looked at this one before it didn't look great uh today they're up 14 percent 3.7 million shares traded their daily's okay uh it looks like a spac so you know they have a this 
looks like it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it is, but it just comes out flat down of nowhere. Start getting this volume. I don't really like to trade this in the intraday uh, for for the way I trade, so I'm gonna skip on that one. I don't do not like the way that one looks. Here's open. Open. You gotta be careful, guys. This can move quite a bit. Their pre market action today is pretty flat at the moment. It's not looking great. Their daily does look nice, especially the last couple of days, losing a lot of ground here. A huge bounce yesterday. I mean, I'm sorry, the day before. And now it's just kind of pretty much hanging out here. So interesting, uh, to say the least. Uh, maybe, you know, we have so many here. I can add this one. It is a good possible, though, if you have the room for it. Uh, aside from that, I don't see this one being on the main list unless it starts getting some movement one way or the other here. It looks like it's hearing me and trying to do that now. Uh, it make me look bad. But, yeah, it, that could be a good one if, if it does get moving. Uh, O-C-O-G-E-N, uh, more of a penny stock, guys, and we don't trade penny stocks. Again, they're a whole different type of animal. Our strategies don't work as well with these penny stocks. And, again, you just got to be careful uh, with trading these uh, uh, as well. All right, guys, let's stop here. Let's go over to our announcements. We'll come back and fine-tune this list. Mike was bringing up Azian because of some vaccine stuff. Goes back to what we talk about on the daily. Azian is a terrible trading stock. It's foreign and, and trades like garbage. Um, yeah, I just brought it up here because you mentioned it. But yeah, guys, just look at this pre-market action. Uh, don't get fooled by the numbers up 2.1, 456. But again, it's just, it's just a bad, bad uh, day, day trading stock. Uh, yep. All right. So... Tonight, I had to check the date, man. It, it feels like uh, we've already been through a few days here. Uh, tonight, Tuesday, 8 p.m., Mike's webinar on trade books. Keep in mind, this is going to be more interactive than most uh, success webinars we have. Mike is going to live poll the audience and kind of challenge traders thinking in some of the things they do and don't do. So uh, should be very interesting. Looking forward to it. The next week, we're going to have Artie who uh, is formerly Peak Capital's risk manager. He uh, now has the title Investment Growth Analyst. He is going to be doing a webinar on the most important aspect of trading, uh, that is risk control. Uh, tomorrow night, 5 p.m. special time, we'll have Krata talking about uh, taming your adrenaline shimp or overcoming analysis paralysis, kind of... Uh, opposite ends of the spectrum with uh, psychology issues in trading. So should be very interesting. Just note that special time. And, uh, and uh, next week, Dr. Katz is going to be doing a town hall. That'll be at the normal uh, 8 p.m. time. If you want to participate in the member trade of the day, trade of the week, take a screenshot of your best trades, uh, trade obviously entries and exits so we can see the trade and then mark it up with commentary on the strategy. Post it on Twitter, tagging at bearable traders, Mike B underscore BBT and at norm BBT. Also use the hashtags BBT family day trading and stock market. Uh, that's how we know we, you, that you enter. We search each day at all of them that are posted. It's chosen, placed on uh, Twitter and in the closing bell show. The winner is announced there. Uh, and then we take all the trades of the day and those compete for trade of the week, which the team votes on over the weekend and is announced Mondays. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube and like to try out the chat, use the pro, pro, uh, excuse me, use the promo code premarket24. That's premarket24. It'll give you a discount on the intro membership, which is seven calendar days, five trading days in the chat. Also gives you access to the Monday night live classes, which are Carlos's onboarding at 8 p.m. immediately followed by Kyle's technology webinar. Uh, it doesn't auto renew or turn into any other kind of membership. Also, if you would like to either become an elite member or uh, upgrade your membership to elite, use the promo code LUCK40 to get 40% off the annual elite membership. All right. Thank you, Norm. All right, guys, let's get to it. Uh, let's take a look at our list here. So starting with our main one, we have uh, two Bitcoin plays here, Mara and CAN. I'll just keep one. Maybe CAN looks... Uh, Looks decent here, this daily for possible breakout. Again, Bitcoin had, has been hot over the last couple of days, uh, so doing pretty good this morning. ACAD, I love this drop here, guys. I'm just a little bit concerned with the volume. I'm not sure if this one's going to trade uh, very clean at the market open. Right now, pre-market, great drop here. Uh, spread not so bad as I'm looking through uh, the numbers on here. Um, but then this could move quite a bit. Some of these candles, 50 cents plus easily. 
So uh, you got to be careful with that one. But again, I'm on the fence on this one. I think I'm going to move it down. Um, again, I love to really love to drop on it, but I'm just concerned that the volume might not be there at the market open. Uh, Sticks Fitch S Fix is on here, guys. They're down 20%. Um, this could be a hit or miss, but with this drop here, hopefully we can get a good movement out of this one. We'll keep that one on here. Uh, AMD looks good. This is going to be our tech play today. We also have Apple. I think Apple is a good one also. I actually want to move Apple up because they're trading very nice this morning. Their pre-market action very active with 2.5 million shares traded. Uh, so we'll see how that's going to play out today. Uh, all right, heading down to our possibles list. We got a lot on here. Not a lot that looks great. Uh, let's see what... Oops, I'm trying to delete. Delete. Let's see what we can move up or delete. ACAD will keep on here, guys. Again, I love this drop here. We'll see what comes out of that. FSR this morning. This could be interesting. Um, if we can get a squeeze above this here or a pop, that could be interesting. Apple we have on the top. Let's remove it from here. Uh, here is Neo. Neo starting to get going. I think Neo could be good. Uh, it's starting to look real good there. So let's add Neo to our list. Remove it from here. I'll add that up. Uh, MU and AMD, we have both of those on there for a possible GameStop entertainment purposes here. Although it looks good, guys. I mean, if this was not GameStop and was so heavy, it was not so heavily manipulated and you can manage the risk, this is a great, great pre-market action. This is a great daily right here without looking at this nonsense back over here. Right there's a great, great daily, guys. Beautiful breakout um, yesterday, right? Now today we're gapping up 15% with some volume. If it was not GameStop, this thing would be amazing to have on our list today. But uh, again, it's just so highly manipulated. I just don't want to don't want to deal with that. Uh, DKS guys, pre market action still not looking good, um, and the dailies uh, again just horrible. I think they're very difficult stock to trade. So I'm going to remove this one uh, from the list again. I like space as a possible for uh, if we can get going for a bounce here. Pre market action not looking great right now. We've seen way better out of space with some heavy volume. They're up six point. Uh, a cent, six percent right now, but I do like what well, as Nor mentioned the daily we're sitting on here. Um, somebody can come in and find a value at this price uh, for space. So we'll see how that's going to look as we get into the market open. Here's plug, another great possible. We've seen some really good days out of plug, so uh, we'll keep it on here. PLTR again, this is our hit or miss stock. Um, we're going to keep it right on here. Xpev, we do have Neo. Both Neo and Xpev look really, really good this morning. So we'll keep them both on here. I think they're. If you look at the daily, they look uh, over sold they look very extended towards the downside on the daily uh you know we could be in for a little bit of, of a bounce hopefully here so uh, either one of those looks good and then last one disney disney looking at our secondary list here their daily i think on disney looks great um if we can get uh, another push up above this previous day close but it's a great possible we can come back to it later and see if it's looking any better so all right i think we have a good list uh one two three four five six uh someone mentioned in chat dkng uh looks good for a long yeah they they do actually they do look good for a long here they start to get some volume now that you're seeing this breakout um yeah they, they, they look good we can add this as well let's throw dkng on here uh why not that looks good all right all right guys let's get going so here's mara so i got two of these i'm probably not going to keep both um let's keep one i don't want to i don't want to keep both of these here i think maybe can um yeah whatever let's just get rid of can and uh, we'll put CN as a possible down here. We'll, when we look at Mara, we'll think about CN and the rest of the Bitcoin plays. You also have Riot as well that you can look at. So, uh, you know, with that said, we can actually, let's move up a DKNG because it's starting to move there nicely. That looks good. Um, yeah, that looks good. Let's see what comes out of that. All right, uh, let's do levels, guys. So Mara right now, highs and lows from the last two trading days, pretty much uh, taking care of you there towards the downside. You want to you want to add, though, the low of the pre-market. That's going to be right here for you, uh, 31.16. Above the price action right now, you do have uh, uh, every right on here. A lot of touches around 35.58. So you got some days on here hitting up against that. Not the best daily. So we, again, when you have this type of daily, it's very difficult to find levels. Um, you're not going to get those very nice clean levels. That's one of the reasons why we want to see a very clean daily on a stock because you can easily spot these levels, right? Um, if you look at KO, you know, to find levels on that stock or, or, or BUD, the one we talked about earlier, BUD, you know, the levels are all over the place and, and these levels are very, very important. So 35, 58, 40, 09 levels on the on Mara towards the top and towards the bottom, you're pretty much taken care of here. So again, not a great pre-market action, guys. Hopefully, I'm hoping that it can get better and break out here. We'll have to see as Bitcoin is, is strong this morning. Um, here is this, uh, X fix uh, towards the bottom, low of the pre-market, 51.14. 50, uh, 50, uh, 51, 
towards the top, the high of the pre-market being set over at 55. So again, nice big drop for them, 20% this morning. Uh, not the cleanest uh, trading stock. I'm hoping for uh, a gap type fill play here that can get going back up to 60. Let's see if we can get that. Looking at a, the bigger picture for levels here, look at that great level here at 55. Look at that great area of support. Nice double double bottom right on there, a beautiful palm. That's, that's real nice. Um, slightly above that, we do have this great level here, guys, at a 59.44. And you see plenty of area of resistance here. You bang your heads back and forth on this double bottom there on that 59. Uh, 44 level and then above that guys your highs and lows from the last two trading days so uh, let's see how that continues here is amd today uh amd low of the pre-market uh, you don't need to mark mark down much here low of the pre-market 75 uh 25 uh right there and then above that the pre-market high which is being set at right now uh 76 76 so we'll throw a level there as well outside of that range you do have your highs and lows from the last two trading days you don't really need to mark uh, any more on there uh, here's apple guys as tech Tech is getting a little bit of a bounce today. Uh, Apple right now love the pre-market 118.11 above towards the top 119.74. Uh, and then very similar as we saw with some of the other stocks. Again, it, you're pretty much stuck between the highs and lows of the last two trading days. Same thing we saw on AMD. I don't think you need to, really need to add uh, any more to Apple neither. Uh, here's Neo getting a bit of a bounce, looking pretty strong this morning, up 7%. Low of the pre-market right now sitting at 36.04. We're already hitting here high of the pre-market at the moment, 37.59. So we'll throw that on there. And again, very similar to a lot of these stocks, the highs and lows from the last two trading days are surrounding you here. So you don't need, really, really need to add any more on here. You're pretty much cover or there. So uh, that looks good. DKNG guys starting to get going here. So this is looking nice. Towards the bottom, highs and lows from the last two trading days. We're getting a nice pop here, 6.6. Volume starting to come in on it, so that's good. I have the pre-market right now, 67, 64.70. So we'll throw that level on there. Then above that, guys, we do have 68.17. All the way up here, 70, 48, and obviously uh, up here at a 72.05. So again, plenty of levels there. Uh, let's see how that is going to play uh, to play out there. So, all right, pretty good watch list so far, guys. Not great. We've definitely seen better. Um, but again, this is uh, what looks the best from what we're looking at at the moment. Take a quick look at our secondary list one more time. Let's see if anything is catching our attention here. Uh, CAD, again, I think this is the top possible, guys. A lot of movement here this morning. 1.5 down nicely, 42% um fsr this morning what do we have here could be a good possible not doing a whole lot right now uh mu uh, tech play there for us gamestop looking good pre-market action up 16 percent. great volume on this one guys if it was not that stock i would definitely be having it on my list uh space starting to make a little move here this looks good also so keep an eye on that one um plug okay pltr our sleeper there expert starting to get going so that one's good you can watch either one either that one or neo both look great and Disney here is another uh, great possible. So a lot of our, on our possibles list, not a lot that looks great in there, but uh, let's see how the market uh, turns out at the open. All right, guys, let's get over to our moderators lineup. Let's see what we have here. Let's bring in what the moderators are watching this morning. All right, whoops. Let's make this a little smaller so it's easier to read, and then we'll move this over uh, just a little more right over there. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right, so here's Neo. Uh, no, here's Thor. He's watching Neo, uh, Disney, and Apple. Eamon is watching CAN, Riot, and uh, DKNG as his primary list. Secondary list, he has F, uh, KOPN, and Piton. Um, Mike is looking at his break of high scanners. He's looking for BA and Disney this morning. Uh, Peter, IPOs, GROY, SVFB, and SVFC. Uh, opening up today on his list amd apple acad secondary list neo an pc low flow stocks be careful with that one uh and we also have GameStop diamond hands <laughs> uh tiffany's looking at apple neo tesla mara john is looking at roku uh, airbnb and baidu this morning dima she is looking at neo expat uh fuel cell and amd as well so all right, pretty pretty good list from the moderators there, guys. We have uh, we have some similar stocks that we're watching this morning. Uh, again, it's not a great great list. Uh, there's a lot on our on our gapping up list this morning with the market being a, a little bit up today. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if this bounce is going to hold. It's going to be very important. The last couple of days, guys, as you know, you look at the spy and Jai's been talking about this. You're getting all these very wide candles, a lot of volume coming through here, pushing stocks left and right. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how we make out out of this range. We've got two range here. We have this one all the way up here, 391, right, right below the high uh, all-time high. We're just banging our heads back and forth here. 
uh, it's going to be interesting to see how we end this week and start the next week. Again, um, it, it, it's creating a lot of movement for us. It's been a lot of fun, so hopefully that continues. Um, all right, that's all we have. Uh, Norm, anything else that we might have missed before we uh, hop off here? No, bud. Just uh, hope everybody has a great day. Trade safe. Be smart. All right. Excellent, guys. Take care. We will see you all tonight. By the way, it is the uh, we have the success webinar tonight by Mike. Uh, please, please do not forget to be. It's going to be very interactive. Uh, uh, you're going to have a chance to submit uh, uh, your your answer to some of the questions he has. He's going to be pulling the room and see how other people are answering as well. So do not miss that. It's going to be a fun one tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So see you guys there. Take care, everyone. Have a good one. Take care, guys.